Hello there, welcome to another one of my art classes. Here's a little overview of where I'll be working. Here's a little over. This is what we'll be painting today, this lovely rabbit. Rabbit named Q-Tip that I actually help out and see a little sanctuary that I help out at. This is when he was a little baby of a giant lump of kale. So that's what we'll be painting. We're going to be using um, acrylic paint for this, using a 12 by 12, this is a canvas panel right here. Um, you can use a canvas if you prefer, but uh, I've got a few different sets here of paint that you can use. I'm going to be using for this class, I'm going to be using this one here. This is a set by Artist Loft. You can usually get a deal on it, you know, uh, if you go to Michael's or whatever or something similar. Yeah, like I say, these aren't exclusive, you can use what you want really uh, this is another set that would be you know suitable basically just the primary colors a green would be helpful as we will be mixing a green for the kale there's another set so whichever one you know whichever is you find most comfortable anyone easy access for you to get go for any of those right I'm going to be using willow charcoal here although you can use obviously a pencil for doing the opening drawing I've got a palette here Got something I can mix a water thing here for the brushes. Have a little thing to wipe off the paint on my brush here, a little microfiber tile. And let's get into the actual brushes themselves. Got one of these here. So you're gonna be using this to add the fluffy texture of the rabbit. For other sections where where this one's a bit thick, we'll be using the fan brush for a little bit of texture on the rabbit's hair. We're gonna be using this as a kind of this rounded brush here for you know filling in a lot of the gaps here and there try and cover a lot of paint quite quickly and we've got a few small brushes here one here that's got um it's like it's um rectangular there it's rectangular this small brush and another one that's more like a a thin um how would I describe it like a thin liner brush here very small for that's going to be for doing stuff like the eyes probably okay so now you now you know what what brush we got what we're using for let's get on with this job this painting get yourself set up pause now if you're not yet set up if you are set up let's get going obviously you need a palette too I didn't mention that wanted to mix your paint on this is what I'll be using here Hopefully got a nice overview picture here of the colours, so it's uh, nice and easy as the sort of colours that we'll be after. For the actual drawing of the rabbit, I'm going to be cutting it down into shapes. So it's going to start off with shapes to try and make the drawing initially quite easy. And then we're going to go from there. So I'll move this out to one side for a minute, give myself a bit more room for my maneuvers and gestures for this so first of all we're going to do an oval in this direction here because this is going to make up the most of the body of the rabbit More of an egg shape than an actual proper oval, that, but yeah, roughly something like that. And then I'm going to do a triangle here, a right angle triangle. I'm going to do square blocks here. No, rectangular blocks actually not square just to give a sense of the ears I'm going to do a rectangle here for where the front paw will be and this other one here and we're going to do an oval here for the back leg so that's roughly the basis that we're going to use to refine to get this rabbit so 
first of all, I'm going to start with the more complicated part of the actual rabbit's hair. This is going to be the key thing. I'm going to round it out a bit, bring it to a little knob there. I don't know if um, you can, this is a good thing about this stuff, it's very easy to rub out like this so you can go over it again. That's why I chose this, because that needs to be a bit steeper in my view. We'll move on to the ears. The ears are going to be quite round, so bring them out. Slight curve on it. Bring it back there. And this one here is going to go out quite wide here. And then come to a curve there. You see it's a So you go, we've got a little hint of it going on now, hint of it looking a bit more like a rabbit and then we're going to do this front leg, bring it in and bring it up there, to give it a curl, where the joint of the front leg's going to be, there, I don't think my hand was over it but yeah I'll just show you, there. We're going to do this back leg, not do too much to it, just try and bring it out where the back side is, there you go, nice rounded shape to it, don't want the rabbit to be too fat, bring it in a bit. And here where this line is, it might be a bit too rounded there, so you want to bring it into more. Something like that to give more of a sense of a rabbit shape. And then we're going to roughly put in the eye, which will be somewhere around right in the middle here. It's going to be a roughly a 45 degree angle that it's going to be facing down at. Something like that, close to the middle. And there you go, that gives us enough of a basis to work on right now. Obviously we're going to refine it a bit. Do a little bit so you can, if you've got something like this, a rubber, you can rub out the lines. It's not really necessary though, because we're going over this in paint. But it's up to you. Alright, now we've got the rough shape of the rabbit, although I do feel like the ears, from the size of the head in comparison to the ears means I should make the head a little bit smaller. You may notice little bits like this where you'll see it and you'll go, hmm, and that doesn't quite right look quite right proportionally. Start in and then come back out again slightly. There you go, that's, that's roughly decent proportioned, I think, the ears to the body to the head. Alright, and now I'm gonna get on with some paint, get some paint ready. If you're ready to paint also, then get your paints to ready to go. If not, then Feel free to pause it now if you want to work on your drawing, refine it a bit, if you want to take the video back a little bit to um, review it and, you know, try and correct any bits that you see. 
it's up to you but that's going to be the rough basis right there of the drawing now we can paint the background is what we're going to do so we're going to create a brown and the way we're going to create a brown is we're going to use some red charming sound and some green if you haven't got a set with green then add some blue and yellow together and that should help you get it um, we're going to do a little bit of um, mixing and refining to see if it's the right sort of like muddy dirty um, coloured brown that we're after see this is looking a bit dark to me right here so we're going to want to I'm going to put a little bit of yellow and then a bit of white in it Don't go too mental in terms of how much paint you put on to, uh, in there too, because then, because we're only doing the background with with this colour. I'm going to be quite broad and fast and not worry too much about filling every gap with thick paint. There you go. See what sort of colour we're getting now. It looks like it may need a bit of red, I think. It's looking slightly grey green sort of brown so I'm looking at a bit more white I think and a little bit more red myself you'll start to get a sense of this when you're looking at it what it may need as you can see the the reference image here this background is, is a, a a dirt mud type of brown and that's what we're trying to aim for like the under one not the one the little highlighted like tufts of mud that will come after this initial slightly lighter layer there you go that's starting to look a bit better but it just needs a smidgen small amount of red there we go hopefully that'll be enough go and it's the rounded brush I've been using for this this bit you know had a hint more red I think because it's still quite green there you go that's more the color And this is now the process is just going to be just literally get rid of the white around the outside, just get rid of it. It doesn't have to be too precise, this stuff, because we're going to go over it with a different um, colour tone afterwards. about you mine's showing that it may need a little bit more white to it still so. there you go that's slightly better I hope you set up on something like an easel I'm on this on a table on a flat surface and then it gets a better camera angle the actual action of the painting but preferably this would be on an easel quite fast about this
extra paint here on my brush just trying to get it off from the mixing there you go Just what making sure not going into this painted area, the drawn out area for the rabbit, just putting the paint around the edges of it. Be a bit slower obviously during this bit, make sure you don't try not to get any paint over that. Just getting on with the, this paint, getting rid of the white. Can use a potent, uh, slightly bigger brush if you wanted to for this. If you were, if you feel like it's going a bit slow, if you have one spare. I'm using this because it covers a decent amount of paint quite fast but it also is small enough that I can go around the edges quite easily of this. There we go, that's pretty much done there with that. A few little gaps, right there, there's that now. I'm gonna do a darker color for, if you can see in the reference painting here, you know, these darker bits here to indicate like modern um, soil that's been disturbed to see the shadows and whatnot and, and the different types of brown that you see as a result of the little contours in the ground. It's not supposed to be too uh, detailed, just to give an impression of, you know, this rabbit is on dirt on modern soil that they've obviously run and scratched around at and eaten on and all that sort of good stuff. So that's the indication of the impression we're going for here and it's quite easy and we're not going to do anything too difficult or complex. So I'm going to give that a second or two to just um, dry up a little bit, although it doesn't need to be dry too much. bit there okay now I don't know if you've got the same as me but I've got like a darker layer okay just a smaller bit in the center to to do the light because I didn't want to use too much paint making the whole thing lighter so now I can mix in for this darker shade that it's got here if you've got something similar then um, to this then do that if not then just add um, a very small amount of black to try and darken it up a bit in fact, I may add a very small amount to darken it up myself. 
I'm going to put it there actually so then it's so I can just dab a little bit into it because this black is very potent as a colour for darkening such things you don't want it to go too dark because then you may have to rejig doing the colour again to get a slightly darker vision of brown which is what we're after a very similar brown that we just had but darker for like the shadowy parts on the ground so got a semblance of that right now I'm going to use the same brush if you want to wipe it off at all get if you've got excess paint around the edge feel free I'm going to add a hint more red to it now that we're going the outer edge colour and it looks quite green again mine Okay, I'm going to use this, but if you're worried about how good you are with the brush in terms of mark making uh, in a small, fast way, feel free to switch to a smaller brush, a smaller squared one, something like this. I mean, it will take longer, it will take a lot longer in fact, but um, you know, obviously you can't really go wrong by doing little marks and shadows in the dirt because it's only a small brush whereas this if you get it wrong you may do a big line across or something but the intention is to hold it quite light like this so then you're not doing anything too grounded and precise and you just like tapping the painting in like weird places taking it off putting it back on again did this or not like I'll show you on the side here just like going Just to indicate giving that sort of a sporadic sort of effect in the ground. So if you want to practice a bit like this then feel free. I'll show you the look of that. It looks a bit like that there, the touching it like. So if you want to practice that feel free. If you're confident enough to be able to make those light little easy brush marks where we're not doing anything too precise just put basically just putting a different colour on the ground to indicate some sort of shadow is she I think mine needs to be a bit darker I'm going to add a little bit more black It's a lot easier to do this though, to discover that you need more black and put more black in than it is to put too much black in to begin with and then the whole colour looks really dark and you have to try lightening it again. So it's best to do this softly, softly approach with the more potent colours. Need a bit more. There we go, that's a decent amount of that should do it. Any sporadic little brush mark just to indicate shadows in a disjointed contoured bit of dirt, so it's not like flat ground. It's like this rabbit scratched at it and, and jumped at it and started digging in little bits and all that sort of stuff. You may notice also that because the paint below hasn't completely dried it mixes in. You may need to clean off your brush like I just did then to go again. to hold mine a bit still here because it's not on an actual easel just on a table
similar sort of effect. I'll try and get my hand out of the way. to get this bit done fairly fast as it doesn't need to be too precise like I say and I'm sure you'll want to move on to painting the fluffy rabbit Q-tip as the actual name of this rabbit is this painting in the picture the original picture that this painting is based on and this painting is when it's a very small little baby rabbit and the rabbit is now an adult size so this is actually a little bit out of date for the <laughs> at the time of you know recording this to the actual size of the rabbit this is when it's a little tiny baby these areas here around the eye and the head because then we can go thicker with the white when we need to to make it like fluffier again but it's good to get some texture and shadow into it like this this the light source is going to be coming down this way so these edges are going to be white this edge here is going to be white the ears this this side there is going to be white as if the lights coming in there so it's okay for things that would be typically on this side to be a bit darker like the this ear is probably in the way of this side of the head getting f full light so this side of the head will need a little bit there you go quite light as you can see here with this Just a little bit more, I think. There you go. That's pretty much that, I think. Maybe if you very light ones here just to indicate something when we go over it lighter it'll look quite good just quite light there right there's there we go with that you can do that if you want but i think we're probably going to be going over this foot with the kale so you might not have to worry too much about whatever you do with this little foot here so I'm going to put that in the water for a second and I'm going to switch back whilst we've got this grey to this brush. You may need to clean it off. I know I'm going to need to clean mine off. And use the grey we were just using to make, if you see here, we're going to need a V here. See that a V there, and then we follow that round very close to the edge of the ear. There we 
go with that. This is going to be the like edges, the ear where it goes from the tip. If you see here, this one, the reference painting, we've got the ear just here. The little tip around the edge where it goes into the lighter blood vessels and things on the inner ear where it's more pinky to the outer where there's a small layer of hair. So this is the that transitional bit that's like shadowy because of where the light source is this way. Coming this way on the other side of this ear. So this will be a little bit shadowy where that transition happens from the from the pinky inner ear to the outer fur layer. So that's what we're doing here with this bit. I also noticed that this ear of mine here I've done, I think it's a bit too small so I'm slightly extending it. And then when I go over it with a white liner at the end, I can make it slightly bigger. You may notice it, something like that yourself, I don't know. And now, before mine gets lost in other colours, I'm going to add a, a little bit of red and just do the initial bit of the eye, which I'm going to switch to the small, the small rectangular brush here. I'm going to get a very small amount of paint on the end of the brush here, not do too much and just be, this is where you hold it a bit lower down to be a bit more controlled. Just go around the edge where you want the eye. Because then when that's in place we can quite easily correct it if we go over the um the over any of it with the white doing the fur in a bit. If we go over it and wipe out our initial drawing we won't know where the eye was meant to be or where we wanted it. So there's that. Got a little bit of black paint, you can always do the slightly black edged corner there if you want. I'm gonna do it now whilst this whilst I got some wet black that were just there. We'll go back to that anyway and improve it. But now, whilst we've got this red out, we should use it. Mix it with a little bit of water, particularly if we've got a little bit of black on the end like I've got then. A little bit of water there. Make this kind of crimsony colour. I don't know if you can see this. More of a crimsony colour there. And just do this initial bit here where it's going to be more shadowy. There this crimson colour and just a small layer around this ear alright now we've done that we'll get a little bit of white mix with this to give us the inner ear pink colour. Alright so we've got a bit of white there, I'm going to mix it in. There you go and paint it on. It's not particularly pinky this one. We need a bit of red and a bit of white together without the crimson. There you go. We'll go over parts of this slightly um, in white to lighten it up, particularly towards the centre because then we need to do some blood vessels uh, within the inner ear of the rabbit 
with a slightly darker coloured red so we need to have a, a lighter coloured pink to contrast and make that uh, visible. I need a bit more of this colour when it, these areas here around the eye and the head because then we can go thicker with the white when we need to to make it like fluffier again but it's good to get some texture and shadow into it like this this the light source is going to be coming down this way so these edges are going to be white this edge here is going to be white the ears this this side there is going to be white as if the lights coming in there so it's okay for things that would be typically on this side to be a bit darker like the this ear is probably in the way of this side of the head getting full light so this side of the head will need a little bit there you go be quite light as you can see here with this Just a little bit more, I think. There you go. That's pretty much that, I think. Maybe if you very light ones here just to indicate something when we go over it lighter it'll look quite good just quite light there right there's there we go with that you can do that if you want but i think we're probably going to be going over this foot with the kale so you might not have to worry too much about whatever you do with this little foot here so I'm going to put that in the water for a second and I'm going to switch back whilst we've got this grey to this brush. You may need to clean it off. I know I'm going to need to clean mine off. And use the grey we were just using to make, if you see here, we're going to need a V here. See that a V there, and then we follow that round very close to the edge of the ear. There we go with that. This is going to be the like edge of the ear where it goes from the tip. If you see here, this one the reference painting, we've got the ear just here. The little tip around the edge where it goes into the lighter blood vessels and things on the inner ear where it's more pinky to the outer where there's a small layer of hair. So this is the that transitional bit that's like shadowy because of where the light source is this way. Coming this way on the other side of this ear. So this will be a little bit shadowy where that transition happens from the from the pinky inner ear to the outer fur layer. So.
So that's what we're doing here with this bit. I also noticed that this ear of mine here I've done, I think it's a bit too small so I'm slightly extending it. And then when I go over with the white liner at the end I can make it slightly bigger. You may notice it something like that yourself, I don't know. And now, before mine gets lost in other colours, I'm going to add uh, a little bit of red and just do the initial bit of the eye. Which I'm going to switch to the small the small rectangular brush here. I'm going to get a very small amount of paint on the end of the brush here, not do too much and just be, this is where you hold it a bit lower down to be a bit more controlled. Just go around the edge where you want the eye. Because then when that's in place we can quite easily correct it if we go over the um the over any of it with the white doing the fur in a bit. If we go over it and wipe out our initial drawing we won't know where the eye was meant to be or where we wanted it. So there's that. Got a little bit of black paint, you can always do the slightly black edged corner there if you want. I'm gonna do it now whilst this whilst I got some wet black that were just there. We'll go back to that anyway and improve it. But now, whilst we've got this red out, we should use it. Mix it with a little bit of water, particularly if we've got a little bit of black on the end like I've got then. A little bit of water there. Make this kind of crimsony colour. I don't know if you can see this. More of a crimsony colour there. And just do this initial bit here where it's going to be more shadowy. There this crimson colour and just a small layer around this ear alright now we've done that we'll get a little bit of white mix with this to give us the inner ear pink colour. Alright so we've got a bit of white there, I'm going to mix it in. There you go and paint it on. It's not particularly pinky this one, may need a bit of red and a bit of white together without the crimson. There you go. We'll go over parts of this slightly um, in white to lighten it up, particularly towards the centre because then we need to do some blood vessels uh, within the inner ear of the rabbit with a slightly darker coloured red so we need to have a, a lighter coloured pink to contrast and make that uh, visible. I need a bit more of this colour. I'm going to add a little bit of the pink here to this bit on this side of this area as well. There. We will lighten it up, but like I say, when we add um, this another layer of um, when we add layers of white to it. There you go. So. If you want, we can. I'm trying to think. We should what we should do now. Either jump straight to the white, or if we should um, do the shadows first. I think maybe the shadows first. 
So I'm cleaning off this brush, this rounded one here. I'm going to get some black, get a small amount, pop your brush in the water again to get the bit of water on the brush, and then put it on there and then mix your paint in it so it's a little bit watery because we don't want the black to be thick and potent we want it to be a slightly translucent effect that um, shadows sometimes have you know shadows have they kind of just darken up an area don't they you can even use your finger if you feel it's a bit dark like this to get some bit off we'll just see where there'll be shadows trying to bring that slightly darker colour up into a little bit here where the light will almost not be touching this side this, that side of the leg just there and you can even preemptively if you want put a little bit of this in here for where the kale's going to go because there's going to be shadows for the kale here so if you want to imagine that you're painting in like the stalks of a few bits of kale here like this so then when you go over it with the green you'll already got the shadow in whilst you've whilst we've got this color and we're using it so you've already got it there whereabouts you want to put your kale kind of can wipe it off if you feel you've got a bit too much I feel like it's a bit too strong there so but I've got some shadow in there now I like that this gives it a hint of 3d about it and do a little bit under the chin here because the chin's not going to see much light under there the neck area too dark okay I think that's looking pretty good I think we're ready to move on to where the um, black is uh, where the white in the furry bit just a little bit dark there now it's up to you at certain points like round the edges here if you feel like when you put the white on it'll be a little bit you don't feel comfortable with that brush mark making that we were doing to create the initial shadows in the fur here then you can do the use the fan brush for a very similar sort of quite similar sort of thing but you have to be careful that you don't leave like is this leave to just press it down a few times because you'll you leave little curls here so you kind of want to almost just use the end of it rather than pulling with it too much and you'd hold that like this and you'd like just gentle marks like that I'm going to stick with this brush because I'm com comfortable using it but this will give you a smaller mark and the bristles are apart here so you can just use that but you have to be careful which way you're pulling it if you slightly pull the paint to do that you have to be careful which direction you're doing it because we want the fur to kind of flow going backwards that way and hitting the light that way so and that's what we're hoping to do so you have to make sure you do the same thing if you're using the fan brush like I say you can all you can actually practice using both and then see which one you prefer if you're worried about what's up which one you prefer to use like I may use this bit for this bit and then I may actually switch anyway myself to this bit for the head because there's not much room to put a big brush like this in this size of a head whereas you can maneuver this a little bit better to create the fur effect so maybe that's what you should do because that's what I'll probably be doing but like I say you feel free to pause it right now have a little bit of practice on some paper or something to see which one of these you prefer using the most because we're going to be using it white to get this effect done 
just clean and you also want to make sure your brushes are very clean for this bit because if you otherwise if you've got like some dark grey or something on it still and the paint's a bit wet or the brush is wet then it may quite easily bring some grey out into this rather than the white that we're after so I'm going to get some nice white paint on there I'm going to get a little bit on the end you don't want too much paint you can just better to have too little to begin with and then add more than too much and create a big crazy blob I'm going to start right on this edge here You want to almost like just very gently dab the edge to give like a fluffy edge kind of effect here like that and then when you're comfortable then just pull it back towards the main body. This is where you start to see it when you just work it back in here with these shadows already there. You don't like to say, yeah, that's why you don't want too much paint on the brush because you still want to see some of the darker bits underneath in some parts. And there's a reason why we left the more darker bits, the the bits where you want it to be really light, where we left it mostly white anyway. So then when we add this, it's, it already looks light. Trying not to impede your view. working slightly with this keeping your touch quite gentle quite light with this bit here where the shadows are and indicate the hair on the outside is white but under there it is quite shadowy and you want to do the body almost there of the rabbit there you go in terms of the direction of the hair Now this bit here is where the light is going to be hitting it quite brightly around here so we make sure it's, it's on pure white around there where you've got a nice 
If you're going to have any areas with a little bit thicker white paint, that's it. Too much on there. There we go, it's starting to look quite fluffy, mine is, I don't know how yours is going, I hope it's going equally as well, and giving the fluffy kind of effect. Just adding this slight like, dabby effect in bits where I want it to look, give the effect of fluffiness a little bit more. Certain areas. I want to be quite light with this bit here. Definitely going to be some shadows in this area. Bit too much paint there, I think. You can smudge it out with your finger a bit there if you want. I'm going to. Then it'll start getting lighter again around the edge of the head here. Right, now's the time I think I'm going to switch to the fan brush. I'm going to have to be quite light with this area now. You don't, you don't want too much paint on your brush here. I'll move this in a bit. Just, And you want to be gentle with it again. Like I say, it's, it's much easier to add more paint than deal with going too hot and hard too early. Because then you'll make a big mess. Here we go, just nice and gentle with it. Think about the directions, go, almost going out from the eye in different directions as often animals do. Obviously we need to correct the eye, do the details on it, but you know, that'll be once we've done this bit. a few spots I want it slightly lighter here in a gentle way there we go
that is mostly done there. Need to work a little bit more on this edge. Okay, now I'm going to put that away. I'm going to switch to probably a little square one again. Make sure you wipe all the water and paint off this because we're going to use the white now and obviously we don't want any of the colours or water left over interfering with it. So I'm going to hold it quite tight here to this because we want to be quite controlled because this is where we're going to go around the ears here. You will probably have to keep going quite often to the paint here like this if you want to get a nice strong white effect. I want to bridge this gap a bit for the years. There you go. Just wiped a bit of paint there, I don't want it too thick there because it's going to be like a slight shadowy channel between the ears there. So we want there to be a little bit of darker colour there, not too much white. On its head. I'm going to use this brush again myself. You may know you may have done your head quite fluffy already, you won't need to do this, but to me there's I want to add a hint of fluff there. It was a bit too flat for my liking, so I'm just going to add a small dash of it there. Because the next job will be to move on to the kale, and obviously, I want to have the rabbit sorted before moving on to the kale. Very gentle because of the lack of room here, really. There you go, that's that pretty much done, I'd say. going to put that away and we're going to switch back to this round brush here. If you've got a green, get your green out now. If you don't have a green, then um, mix one using blue and yellow. It's roughly 50-50 of each, but depending on the strength of your yellow, it may be something like one-third blue, two-thirds yellow, because some yellows are a bit weaker and you need more of it to counteract the strength of the blue. So, yeah, that's what I'd say. I'd say mix, mix, um, maybe even start off with the two thirds 
yellow, one third blue, and then add a little bit more blue as you go if you need it until you get a decent kind of like that dark green that's that kale often is because that's what I'm be using this now the green here fallow green it's a good it's got that color of kale to be honest the darker slit with the slight hint of blue about it so I'm gonna not even gonna bother mixing anything with this I'm gonna go straight in with it and where my shadow was here save that's on the right side of it, I'm going to draw the stalks of kale on the left side here. So you see this? With this, just use the edge. There. Two stalks of bundles of kale here. And now I'm just literally going to have like a weird dab effect here, just to indicate the little bushy, curly kale sort of effect. Feel free to go just over the nose, that's why we didn't paint it in completely. Because obviously that's where the rabbit would be sticking their face in to have a good munch. So. Be very light round the edge to make sure that it gives the effect like there's the curly bit of kale there. Right, I'm gonna add I'm gonna go to do a little bit of black now. Small bit of black. If you've not got any, like I haven't really got any actually. I'm gonna add a little bit there. Just to give the, an indication of the darker side of some of these kale bunches. So obviously some will hit the light and some of it won't. Like and then when I when we add a yellow and a hint of white in a minute on the other like to the other bits, it'll give a good nice dark to light contrast within the texture of the kale. Just like you're just dabbing it very lightly here, not doing too much with it. Okay, that's roughly that now. Now I'm going to move on to the yellow myself. It doesn't matter if you the paints if you want to let it dry or if you want to paint it wet like I'm going to. Be prepared though here, you will probably have to clean off your brush a few times because the green will overpower the yellow and you have to get rid of whatever green is there to then re-pick up a decent amount of yellow. So watch, we're going to start here on the this light side of this. Kale branch there. Very gently there with it. And we're holding the painting quite loose further back to give a loose effect here too. Use it kind of quite sporadically. Some bits of hitting the light, some aren't. Need to wipe off my brush now, it's picking up too much green. Because sometimes it makes with when you add like a yellow to this green, it adds a little light lighter middle green to it in the highlights too, which is nice. Right, I'm gonna leave that now. I'm gonna clean off my brush. I'm gonna add a few highlights of white, and then that might be it. Just into this, like here. Because 
because then it'll mix with some of the greens in here just give a lighter interesting green to it where the light's hitting it you may have to clean off your brush quite often again like I've been doing There to go, I've got quite a lot of highlights here, I may even want to darken a little bit of it up here, right there. Okay, I'm just going to make this bit here, how it looks there, the same more on this side here. And then I'm done, I'm going to add a little bit more yellow. Then we're going to add a little bit more white. I need to add a bit of white because I used that last bit up I had. And just very light dabs again. The very ends of the kale bunch we're hoping to indicate here. go very nearly finished add a little bit more just on that bit there you go and I might want to add a little bit of white or this lighter colour here just on the stalk there like that and maybe a the darker line bit just for the shadow the other side so there's my black here it's very thin and the shadow for the bunch here So that's pretty much that I'd say. Finished. If you're not finished that then obviously you know keep going. If you want to show me how yours turned out if you give this a go you can reach me on the social media pages on at Robbie Potter Art. Um, there's a, there'll be a link to my website in there. I also do commissions. I have a selection of paintings, obviously, or originals, and all sorts of stuff myself. I do a lot of wildlife ones, do some people ones. I'm quite happy to paint your uh, companion animal, like a dog, cat, whatever, whatever you have, pigs, whatever you want. Companion animals typically are those. Uh, I have a Florida wildlife collection. I do quite a lot of Florida wildlife ones. But I paint uh, a lot, a very variety of things. So check out RobbiePotterArt.com. Check out at Robbie Potter Art on social media. Please let me know how you do. Uh, if this, you know, if you like this class or whatever, feel free to like and subscribe and all that. And I hope to see you in the next class. I hope you enjoyed this. This was fun. This is cute. So I hope you have your own cute interpretation of Q-tip, this white fluffy rabbit. Have a good day.